Hello, BookTube. Um, this is the non-fiction November 2017 book tag. Uh, it's an original tag was by Read, Create, Repeat Homeschool. And I was tagged by Beacon Hill Books. Thank you very much. Um, it's a series of 15 questions and it it uh, surrounds non-fiction November 2017. Primarily what I read is nonfiction. Um, my my issue is to return to reading fiction, so I'm a bit of an anomaly there, though not totally so. Um, so I'll start with the first question. Nonfiction November is a great time to meet other nonfiction lovers. Give some shout out of uh, shout out love to one of your favorite nonfiction booktubers. Well, there, there are several booktubers I watch who do nonfiction. Um, to get involved in booktube, um, I just found this channel, Steve Donahue, and started watching his uh, book chats and mail halls and uh, uh, some shelf tours. And that's how I knew there was a nonfiction presence on uh, booktube. So I say Steve would be the primary person but um one i discovered later who does some excellent non-fiction uh, in book chats is earnestly Eston, and he covers a lot of material that you don't see other places uh such as opera um and and he's done a lot of other non-fiction too so it's i those two would be primary and uh number two why do you read non-fiction well, I fell in love with nonfiction as a young man. I mean, I I read a lot of fiction early on, but I ran into um, God's G Graves and Scholars by C.W. Sarum was an early archaeology book. My reading of science fiction re led to reading science, Willie Lay, some of Isaac Asimov's stuff, nonfiction, as well as his fiction. Um, love of nature and animals. Uh, led to reading a lot of nonfiction, and uh, I watched Jacques Cousteau on TV, and of course I just would go get his books or anything on oceanography, and then I really became interested in maritime history, so I read, I've always read a lot of that. Um, number three, where in your home do you like to read the most? I have a little corner nook at the top of the stairs um, that has a big old beat up chair I sit in and I'll read there if nobody's home I'll read downstairs here on the couch um, I don't read in bed quite as much as I used to I don't know why it just next thing I know it's morning time to go to work uh, so number four so this is the theme or the challenge theme of home and the next few ones are Give a uh, nonfiction recommendation set in or about uh, in or about your country. So I'm going to go with this. I'm going to lose my place here, but this is the Metaphysical Club by um, Louis Menand. It's a story of ideas in America, and it was published by Farrar Stru Strauss and Giroux in New York, and this was in 2001. It's a uh, metaphysical um, club is a compelling, compellingly vital account of how the cluster of ideas that came to be called pragmatism was forged from the searing experiences of its progenitor's life. Here are Oliver Wendell Holmes Jr., Charles Sanders Pierce, William James, and John Dewey, all of them giants of American thought, made colloquially accessible both as human beings and as intellects. Um, this is a quote from... Uh, Daniel Kevels of Yale University. And A History of Ideas, this is a wonderful, wonderful book. So, um, number five, also home. Which book on your 2017 nonfiction November TBR related to the uh, word home are you the most excited about? And this is a reread. Um, it's a revised edition of the letters of E.B. White, um, 
many, many of you will remember many of his books, Charlotte's Web, Stuart Little. I loved them all. But I probably loved the letters the most. This um, version came out in 2006. Um, yeah, it's just, I love dipping in and out of the letters. For those of you who like that sort of thing, it's a very, very great fun. So number six, and hopefully I'm not missing any of these because it's my handwriting. And I'm not looking at my phone for the list. What do you love to read the most in the nonfiction field? I really, early on it was, it was science and archaeology. Um, then I branched out into biography and history, regional histories, local histories. Um, I like cookbooks. I like books about music. I like, um, love intellectual histories, um, cultural histories art history. So, I, I mean, it's why I, I didn't really get involved in the whole fatigue question that's been going around booktube. If I'm tired of something, I'll just pick up something else. There's, there's more out there than I can ever, ever possibly, possibly deal with. So, um, yeah, if I, if I'm done with uh, one subject, I'll move on to another and then that refreshes me. So number seven, also in love, give a nonfiction recommendation related to the challenge word love. This one even helps with the cover. This is great. Um, My Life in France, Julia Ch uh, Child with Alex Proudhon. Absolutely. You will see <laughs> the hearts going there. Um, and it, it's... They're a story about France, and it's just, it's one of those books I highly, highly recommend. Um, her and uh, Paul Child were quite the couple, and uh, I, I just love the book. Um, yeah, it's a strong recommendation. So, um... And what uh, love-related nonfiction recommendation are you most excited about reading? Well, I've been struggling with this book. And it's Berlioz in the uh, Romantic Century by Jacques Berdon, Columbia Press. So two-volume set. I'm on the first volume, and I have been for months. And it's not the book's fault. It's, it's that I don't have the background necessary for some of it. This is the third edition, Columbia University Press, New York and London, 1969. But there's a little piece here. Um, I'll just read you. Meanwhile, the English players pursued the conquest of France, playing with continued success for Miss Smithson in the large provincial towns. They then returned to Paris, were, were joined by Charles Keane, and gave Richard III and the Merchant of Venice. Berlioz saw his idol again and ventured backstage, but was not admitted. He sent messages which were not delivered. He only managed to find out that neither his name nor his recent success had penetrated as far as the insulated world of the foreign company. Gloomy but undaunted, Berlioz went en loge in uh, July, after the usual elimination contest and its obligato fugue. The cantata subject... Hermione, by the symbolically named uh, poet taster Villiard, retold a scene from Tasso's Jerusalem Delivered. It depicted the love Hermione, an infidel from the Christian warrior Tancred, who is wounded while storming the gates of her city. And uh, this love for Miss Smithson is the English actress. Is uh, a very dominant theme throughout and don't forget the period of time we're talking about. So it's the romantic sensibility was definitely there. So then um, number nine is substance. Nonfiction is a great way to introduce us to people that uh, inspire us to be better. 
Name a person of substance you have loved reading more about. Well, I read an awful lot about, or did at one time, about Winston Churchill. I've read an awful lot about Ethan Allen and Benedict Arnold. Um, I've read a lot about Picasso. So, in biographies, I mean, there's no shortage. Um, I don't, to, for them to be of substance, that doesn't mean I have to agree with everything they do. Or even like everything they do. But if they've had an impact on the world, I mean, there was a time when I went through a lot of books on Alexander the Great. A problematic figure. Um, so, um, inspire me to be better. Even if I see them do something that I don't think is good, that could inspire me to be better. So, there, there's plenty of them. So, number 10. One book would you recommend to people that has a lot of substance to it? All right, so here I think I would go with this book, Music in the Castle of Heaven. Um, it's by the uh, conductor John Elliott Gardner. It's Alfred Knopf, from New York, 2014. And Bach's a fascinating character, and his family's fascinating. And this book is just beautiful, beautifully done. Um, could have gone under the scholarly portion of this this whole discussion, but I would strongly recommend it. And uh, it's how Spock, uh, Spock, how did I say Spock? Bach. <laughs> it's how Bach interacted with um, the politics, the patronage system, uh, the the church and the church politics, but also faith and. Uh, and how they all informed his great, great talent. And we listen to today with an ear that's from an alien time to his. So, um, and our expectations are a bit alien to him. But the book is, is, is wonderful. So, scholarship. Nonfiction can teach us, uh, this is number 12. Oh, no, no, I need to do 11. What book related to substance word are you most excited about in your nonfiction TBR? Well, I'm about halfway through uh, Walter Isaacson's new biography of Leonardo da Vinci, and th thus far it's very good. So that would be it. So number, and it's at the library, so I, on my desk, so I can't really show it. Um, scholarship, nonfiction can teach us a lot. What subjects and topics have you really learned about because of your reading? Everything. American history, archaeology, worldwide, music, art, um, urban history. I remember falling in love with Lewis Mumford's The City in History. Um, yeah, any subject. Um, books, the history of books are probably one of my favorite subjects. Um, there's a lot of great, great books about and some of them are old. So about that subject. Um, so scholarship, which book would you recommend that would teach somebody something well? This one can be a bit dry, but it's beautifully constructed and is just packed with information. And that's the Parthenon Enigma, A New Understanding of the West's Most Iconic Building and the People Who Made It by Joan Breton Connolly. For the end papers. And it's Alfred A. Knopp, New York, 2014, so you should be able to find it easy if uh, it's your sort of thing. But you're going to get into detail with this book. I mean, everything to do, do with it. And that, that can be fascinating. And to me, it is fascinating. So if it's your sort of thing, I would, I would recommend it. Um, number 14, what book related to scholarship are you most excited about reading in nonfiction November? And I'm just getting into this Jefferson, the Virginian, the first of the volumes by Dumas Malone. Um, 
and it is a scholarly biography. Uh, some of it, it's older, so some of it's been superseded, but I know about what those difference, differences might be now compared to when he wrote the books. Um, so I can keep that in keep that in mind while I'm reading them. It does doesn't devalue the achievement to me. Um, so uh, just there's you could read Jefferson books about Jefferson for the rest of your life and probably not read them all. But um, I, I, and I won't do that. But uh, the Malone books I read years and years and years ago, and I've just started collecting them again. So that's a it's a another reread in the in the group just like the E.B. White is. So who do you tag? Um, I'm not even sure who's done this tag. I'm coming to it a little bit late. Um, only a couple days left in November. Um, I didn't feel restricted to just November in this. Um, I would tag, I think Steve's done it. Um, I would tag Ernest Lee Eston. I'm not sure if he's done it or not. Um, he reads a ton of nonfiction. I would tag, um, I think Paperback Junkie. I saw him the other day showing some books about books, most of which I didn't know anything about, and that's one of my favorite topics. So I, I would think he could easily do this tag or some version of it. And um, thank you, BookTube.